Well, today we are continuing with our Bible exposition from the book of uh, Acts. And uh, today we shall consider the third part in uh, chapter 24. As always, I'll begin by reading for us the verses and then we shall begin to open them up after reading them. Verses are 22 of Acts chapter 24. But Felix, having rather accurate knowledge of the way, put them off, saying, When Lyasius, the tribune, comes down, I will decide your case. Then he gave orders to the centurion that he should be kept in custody, but have some liberty, and that none of his friends should be prevented from attending to his needs. After some days, Felix came down with his wife, Drusilla, who was Jewish, and he sent for Paul and had him speak about faith in Christ. Verses 25, as he reasoned about righteousness and self-control and the coming judgment, Felix was alarmed and said, go away for the present. I'll get an opportunity. I will summon you. 26. At the same time, he hoped that money would be given him by Paul, so he sent for him often and conversed with him. 27. When two years had elapsed, Felix was succeeded by Pochas, Festus, and desiring to do the Jews a favor, Felix left Paul in prison. So those are the verses before us to unpack as a, a follow-up actually exposition of what we did last time where as we saw Paul is reasoning his defense before Felix after all uh, a number of uh, accusations that were piled against him by one Tertullus that was hired by the Jews Paul also gave his defense and his defense was clearly stated before actually Felix and so where we are right now we see we are dealing with Felix tremble at Paul's reasoning. So something here that is very important for us to consider is that when you look at verses 22 once again, it says, but Felix having rather accurate knowledge of the way, put them off saying, when Lyasius the tribune comes down, I will decide your case. So you realize that after Felix had heard from both sides, he dismissed the case because of unsupported charges because of unsupported charges but how felix gained the knowledge uh, the knowledge of christianity is one thing that is not stated but the bible says that uh, he had rather accurate knowledge of the way so how he gained that knowledge is what is not basically stated for we know very much well sure that cornelius lived uh, in this particular area called uh, Caesarea at the same time also remember that uh, Philip the evangelist lived in Caesarea so we do not really know how it all played out for him to have come to that uh, accurate knowledge of the way. A case can also be made that Lyasius had already said that Paul was innocent and so when Felix deferred them to him or to delay them with it was actually with a different reason altogether. So we have to be like mindful that uh, Lyasius had written a number of things commenting on to this person called Paul and why he had a lot of people that were after him. So he put off the determination until the arrival of Lyasius with whom he could uh, thoroughly examine the matter. So we don't know, but one thing we can basically say that the kind providence of the Lord was leading and guiding everything that was taking place as to why Felix never gave his final word about this, but he actually went on to delay his judgment by saying he waited. He had wanted to wait for Lyasius to come so that they might decide the case. But in verses 23, it says, then he gave orders to the centurion that he should be kept in custody but have some liberty and that none of his friends should be prevented from attending to his needs. One thing that we can always just know without missing any point is that, uh, dear ones, our lives are ordered by the Lord. Our times are in the hands of the Lord. Whatever delay that you may see, even in your life, it has actually 
a significance it has actually a meaning it has a design so there is nothing that just happens coincidentally god orders the course of events of human life and as far as history is concerned so here we see that god overruling the situation paul was given some liberty to enjoy while in military custody having friends coming around to visit him though the case was not yet decided so who does that but god alone being sovereign over the hearts of men and women actually him channeling their hearts wherever he wants like actually a channel of water it's why we can basically see the hand of god overruling over the entire situation because we know so very much well that at caesarea there was a church and paul had met some disciples from and this particular place of course we remember from uh, chapter 21 and uh, verses 8 there were some disciples that he actually met there and he had some good time with them and of course like we also said that the roman centurion that was that was known as uh, cornelius also happened to have been converted in this particular area so there were people that knew paul and there were many christians in this in this particular place so it is believed that uh uh, it is believed by some biblical commentators that the two reasons as to why Felix kept prisoners that had no wrong is that uh, he did not like to offend the Jews. He did not like to offend the Jews. As we see actually that also being well stated in uh, verses 27. And then the second reason he hoped to be bribed by the Christians to let actually Paul go as far as what we are able to see in verses uh, 26. It made it very clear that there was something of uh, a thought. So we, we can basically com uh, comment that uh, there are two main reasons as to why uh, Felix kept the prisoner that had no wrong. Uh, one we have already seen he did not like to offend the jews as verses 27 makes it very clear that when two years had elapsed felix was succeeded by poachers festus and desiring to do the jews a favor felix left paul in prison the second reason we do see it in verses uh, 26 it says at the same time he hoped that money would be given him by paul so he sent him often and conversed with him so those were the reasons as to why even after having gained an accurate knowledge of the way and how that whatever Paul was saying was true, he could not let go of him. He was anticipating actually something that is to do with a bribe. And then the other thing, he was actually a man that never wanted to offend the Jews. So how was Paul given the liberty? He was not put in a strict confinement but under the charge of an officer who was responsible for him so all of this that you can basically see it is speaking of god ordering the entire situation because we remember that in his last encounter with the lord jesus christ he was told that whatever he had done in jerusalem he had to do the same in rome by making sure that he speaks and testifies of the gospel of our lord jesus christ the reality being that uh, we have already also seen how felix was not actually a just and a righteous man the fact that him as a judge had to exercise discernment between truth and falsehood and not taking sides but that's what he was actually doing using actually unequal measures verses 24 scripture adds in to say after some days felix came with his wife Drusilla, who was Jewish, and he sent for Paul and had him speak about faith in Christ Jesus. So we need to understand something from this verse that Drusilla was a daughter of Herod Agrippa I, who was actually eaten by worms as far as Acts chapter 12, when actually he took the glory that belongs to God alone as people went on chanting and making a lot of noise that his voice sounded like the voice of one of god and so the angel of the lord came and smote him and he was magotized the other thing about drusilla is that drusilla was also a sister of agrippa too before whom paul actually pleaded 
as we shall see in uh, chapter 26, where actually the Bible says, So Agrippa said to Paul, You have permission to speak for yourself. Then Paul stretched out his hand and made his defense. That's another upcoming thing for us to see as far as Paul is defense before Agrippa too. But now one thing that we are to deal with here in chapter 24 is to fully understand this woman and the one that happened to be her husband the reality here that we can also continue to pick as far as Drusilla is concerned Drusilla was also actually in a, an adulterous relationship an adulterous relationship where she had actually uh, she was in another relationship with this gentleman called Felix after having left her husband that is actually historically known as Aziz while he yet lived and got married to Felix who had taken her because of her beauty so this is how people used to play things then and this is how many people today play their game now that they don't care about actually the marriage covenant they do not care about what God's word says about the marriage covenant People are just taken by a number of different things, others financial, others beauty, and many other things that they have exalted in the place of actually esteeming and valuing what God has to say about certain things. So you see here that she was living indeed in an adulterous relationship. The second thing that we can still observe in the text is that uh, it is said by some theologians that Drusilla was responsible for the interview because of her curiosity to hear uh, to hear Paul concerning the faith in Christ and so the fact that this woman was a Jew uh, some biblical historians do allude that she was indeed responsible for this interview that Paul had with actually Felix when she was around that she had wanted she was so curious uh, to hear uh, Paul uh, talking about faith in Christ, which is one of the things that you realize from uh, Acts chapter 20 and the verse is uh, 21. We remember very much well what Paul said. He said, testifying both to Jews and to Greeks of repentance towards God and of faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. Of course, this was the assignment that was laid down before the apostle. So whatever the ambitions, whatever the, the motives were, if Paul was called to say something, one thing you could basically know, the gospel was going to be shared. The gospel was going to be shared. So Paul never navigated people's emotions. He never navigated people's ideas or actually ambitions as to why they were calling him to say something about his Lord Jesus Christ. Paul just gave what we call the, the whole counsel of God's word. So things concerning his person, miracles, life, death, resurrection, salvation, and kingdom, those were things that you could not miss in actually the gospel presentation of Paul the Apostle when he was granted an opportunity to say something about his Lord Jesus Christ. So he would actually, in your face, I present to you the person of Christ, how he's truly God, truly man, how he lived a, sin, a sinless life, how he actually actively obeyed and kept the law, how he actually passively was in obedience uh, even in his death. The, a lot of these outstanding things, Paul would make them very clear to you. So God actually damns no one but a sinner. Felix and Drusilla had the gospel. It's one thing that we can basically see that after some days, Felix came down with his wife, Drusilla, who was Jewish, and he sent for Paul and had him speak about faith in Christ Jesus. So if it's true that Felix and Drusilla died in their sins, they never repented. If they never repented of their sins, we know they will be damned. That very gospel that God uses to save, it is a very gospel that God uses to damn. That very gospel softens others, and that very gospel actually hardens others unto damnation. So the gospel was well actually presented because we are not doubting the person who presented the gospel before them. This is a man that wasn't ashamed of the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Verses 25, and as he reasoned about righteousness and self-control 
under coming judgment, Felix was alarmed and said, Go away for the present. When I get an opportunity, I'll summon you. One thing that you can see here is Paul actually exercising what is well known for doing what we call dia legomai. Dia legomai. Argument, making an argument, making a reasoning in righteousness in temperance and judgment to come he made actually felix tremble and this is because his conscience was convicted as a man living in actually open scene of adultery being an oppressive ruler being with another man's woman or wife he actually he was so very much alarmed at hearing of the wrath to come but instead of seeing his need for repentance and forgiveness, he abruptly ended police preaching, pretending to be much engaged at that particular time. So, the thing that you can basically see, <laughs> the opportunity was made, it's they who called. I know God actually ordered the entire thing. And uh, God's servant who happens to be the Apostle Paul, he made the clarity of the gospel. A place that the Holy Spirit used the preaching of Paul concerning righteousness and self-control and the judgment to come to convict actually Felix and he was convicted of his open sin. But instead of seeing his need for repentance and forgiveness, he actually excused himself by saying that he was actually over engaged at that particular time. So what he did know was that seeking for another time when he had the leisure to send for Paul again, his terrors and conviction would soon be subsided. This is where the scripture tells us that now is the acceptable time for your salvation. The very moment that you do hear the terrors and the conviction of your sin, it's the right time always to actually surrender to surrender, to put down all your weapons of rebellionism and call out unto the name of our Lord Jesus Christ for mercy. But what he did here, he thought he was buying him with the apostle, but not knowing as he was buying him with the apostle, he was in one or the other subsiding his terrors and his conviction of sin because as more time would pass, he would basically forget. So this is the doctrine of all sinners, buying this is actually their behavior. They always like to buy time. They always like to buy time. Yeah, the scriptures are very clear that now is the time. Now is the acceptable time for your salvation. God that is sovereign and wise, who orders all things, who is omniscient, who is omnipresent, who is omnipotent, he knows. He knows the time that that is fit for each and every one of us to come in. So who actually allowed all all this to come, all this alarming to take place in the heart of Felix, it was the Lord. And so the Lord was actually calling on him, but he chose to buy time. Now, when you look at verses 26, the Bible says at the same time, he hoped that money would be given him by a post. So he sent for him often and conversed with him. So the issue concerning his spiritual life was the last thing on his mind. What was so very frontal on his mind was actually again Felix desired a bribe from actually the Christians because he had heard of the liberal heart of sending arms to the poor Christians in Jerusalem. So he kept uh, Paul in prison for that very reason because he had gotten a full story because Paul in his defense before Felix, he told him the reason as to why he came to Jerusalem, one, was to worship and to make offerings. Second, was to bring actually the relief fund for the poor brethren in Jerusalem. So all of that information Felix had, so he put that information all together and he saw how he could take advantage of that full story. So we need to understand, dear ones, bribery in a judge was punishable by the Roman laws. But this is how people continue to bleach. This is how people continue to do things that are, that are unprofessional, that are uncalled for because of the depravity of the hearts of men. The second thing is that, uh, and because he heard that Paul was the ringleader of the sect of the Nazarenes, he supposed that there, being so many, thousands of them, 
they would give a very large sum for the life and the liberty of their comrade called Paul. So we need to understand that Felix knew what he was doing. He knew what he was doing. He was a prisoner was sent to him. Instead of him making a clear judgment, he just chose to look out for what he could gain out of this particular case. Remember, Paul had no bribes to offer. And Felix, Felix's greed for money made him never to be terrified again, even when he still had from the same man and the same truth, but he was now unaffected because he was so very much concerned about the physical gain in terms of money other than him receiving a spiritual gain, having his sins forgiven and living in peace with the thrice holy God. So this is what we call grieving the spirit of God. The promptings, if they cease, you remain actually, that the promptings will, be, will actually cease and then you remain unconcerned, in unconcerned state. That is one thing that we can see that happened with Felix. He had come to that place of being unconcerned. The promptings were no longer continuing. They had ceased because to him gain was more favorable than having his spiritual safety. Verses 27, it says, When two years had elapsed, Felix was succeeded by Porchus, Festus, and desiring to do the Jews a favor, Felix left Paul in prison. Now, this is it. What he had hoped to gain, he never gained. He never gained. When two years had passed, innocent as Paul was, nothing was done to release him. Porchus, Festus was sent as the successor to Felix after the Jews at Caesarea had made a formal complaint to the emperor at Felix's conduct. And so Felix, wanting to please the Jews, left Paul bond. That is around AD 60. So some of the historians say that Felix left Paul in bonds because of Drusilla. She disliked Paul as much as Herodias did for actually John the Baptist. So that is what some actually historians also go ahead to chip in, that Drusilla hated Paul so much, the same way actually Herodias hated John the Baptist because Paul himself spoke in his presentation before Felix and Drusilla. The Bible says that he reasoned about righteousness, which was something that was uncomfortable for them. He also talked about self-control, something that was uncomfortable for them. He also talked about the coming judgment. This was still something uncomfortable uh, for them. So they had, they had no stomach for it. They didn't want to hear that. They wanted to hear something else that was in one or the other encouraging them in their sinful lifestyle. But the reality is one thing that we learned from the apostle that whenever the opportunity came through, he did what was necessary. He preached the gospel uncompromisingly. The results were not in his hand. The results are in the hands of the Lord. For him, he did what he was called to do. He, he planted, he watered, and then he waited unto the Lord to give an increase. That is why the promptings were there in Felix. But Felix actually downplayed them by considering gain above actually having his sins forgiven. So it's a huge lesson for us to learn that, uh, yes, whenever the opportunity avails, doesn't matter the position of the individuals that are before us. We shouldn't compromise with the gospel, shouldn't compromise on the gospel. We need to actually articulate it and speak of all the realities that pertain to the gospel and ask God to move the hearts of the men and women. So with this, we shall actually have to pick it from me, a Lord willing, uh, to consider chapter 25 and to learn more from there as far as uh, Paul's appeal to Caesar that we shall see because he had waited. He had the opportunity to stand before the Jews. They were against him. He went to, actually, they, they sent him to Felix. He actually presented his case clearly, but Felix, like we have seen, he was after some other thing. So now later, Festus comes, he was also after another thing. So to which Paul decided to appeal to Caesar, as we shall see. So I pray that you and I continue to learn from some of the things, apply them in our day-to-day -day 
living and uh, being very much devoted into preaching the gospel uncompromisingly independent of who sits or stands before us. Shalom. Mm -hmm.